Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. It's your girl Jazz and as promised, I am doing a comparison video between the third generation Echo and the fourth generation. I'm going to do my best not to mix them up, but I'm feeling, well, I mean, if you've seen any of my other videos, it's a good chance it's going to happen through sometime. So we've got the third generation, which is the cylinder one and the fourth generation, which is the sphere. So obviously they've done a completely new remodel on the cosmetics of you know the echoes now we can start out by just you know like i said the look is the first thing that you can obviously notice of the difference between the two of course we're going to listen to the sound but that's going to be more towards the end of the video because we want to know about what's the update with it before we actually hear it because i mean that's going to make or break it. If you're wanting to the third generation, I do want to give you a fair warning. It is going to be pretty difficult to find right now. They pretty much phased it out. So if you're looking for one and you know, you just want a good speaker. First of all, I do plenty of reviews on speakers. So if you want a specific one and I haven't reviewed it, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to add it to my list. But um, as far as the third generation, pretty much refurbished is the main version that you're going to find, regardless of the colors. Um, so that more than likely is going to be about 50 bucks. I, and I'm doing a guesstimation because I haven't actually looked for the cost of the third generation since I've ordered mine whenever it was pretty much new. And I did a review on it. <laughs> uh, as far as the fourth generation it runs about a hundred bucks which for a smart speaker it's a really good deal and I can tell by the weight on it it's the new generation the fourth generation is a little bit heavier I'm not sure if it's just the because of the way it's built or if it's actually just the entire weight is different and again I'm just lifting it I haven't actually measured the weight on either one of them but the fourth generation is heavier and one of the things that really irks me about the fourth generation, and this is just something I'm nitpicking about, is they move the ring light from the top, as you can see on the third generation, to the bottom on the fourth generation. Normally, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but considering the fact that Alexa can be very stubborn. Here's something I found on the web. According to Blurted.com, stubborn means that no matter what, you will not change your mind, or it can mean you are resistant. She's resistant. <laughs> Perfect timing. There's been numerous times where I'm not sure if it's registering because the, you know, I've had the cloth bunched up over here. So if I'm sitting on the couch or something like that, I may not be able to see whether it's registering versus with the third generation, I can see the ring light on the top. I, it could have been anywhere. I would have liked to, actually what would have been really nice to see is maybe in between where the two materials meet would be nice so that way you can get it from different angles. That's just, like I said, that's just me nitpicking. I don't know if anybody else has this issue with it. And then also times where my internet has just been so friendly and it doesn't, you know, disconnect. And so I get the red light. Again, if it's at an angle where I can't see or I'm pretty sure from the, this angle you guys might not be able to see it because I do have it kind of bunched up right here intentionally so like I said I won't be able to know if I'm sitting on the couch which is pretty much right in front of me and so that can be kind of frustrating where I'm sitting here yelling at her and I'm not getting a response I have been kind of mean to, to her a few times out of frustration because she doesn't listen the first time that's just technology what can you say so now I'm going to go a little bit more into the internal core of the two speakers and the difference between the two. Because obviously you've got the, ver you know, you can see the difference as far as an upgrade. But the question is, internally, is it still going to be the same? And I will tell you right off the bat, no, it's not. The fourth generation has a faster processor, so hopefully we won't have as many glitches. And I don't know if the glitches is due to the internet, whether it's me not speaking clearly enough or him unplugging things, internet, phone, I don't know what could be causing it. So I can't necessarily blame directly the speakers. So I will go ahead and add that disclaimer. 
but it does have a faster processor. So like I said, hopefully, fingers crossed, we won't have as many issues. And I do have various versions of the speakers throughout my place. So it may work great one day. One speaker may work great one day. The, the next speaker might not work. You know, like I said, because of the internet. That's what I'm going to blame it on. Now, as far as colors come along, the fourth, the third generation came in five different colors, which is the charcoal, which is that dark, uh, almost black color. We've got the heather gray. There's pictures right here so you guys can tell the difference of the colors. Yeah, charcoal, heather gray, red, sandstone, and this pretty twilight blue. I just wanted to be a blue day, so I had to go ahead and go with the blue. <laughs> now the fourth generation, it only comes in three colors, which is going to be the charcoal, the glacier white, which is probably going to be matching a little bit more towards the cord, and then you've got the twilight blue, again, which is what you're currently looking at. So you have a little bit more of a variety as far as colors with the third generation with the fourth generation. Personally, I don't really care because that's something cosmetic. I want to know about the quality of the speaker. And like I said, we're going to get to that. One of the biggest upgrades outside of the processor that you have with the speakers is that there is something called a Zigbee or Zigabee. I don't know which way to pronounce it. I haven't officially heard anybody say it, so I'm just reading it and I'm assuming it's Zigabee. But, and I'm pretty sure some of, if you haven't seen any of the previous reviews, um, Zigabee is pretty much going to be your network to connect all of your smart devices. If you have, you know, smart plugs, you have the smart thermostat, you know, all of that thing, all of the things, smart lights, you could control that using the fourth generation, which has a Zigbee. Third generation does not have that. It is the first Echo speaker that has had the Zigbee in it. Now, I do want to make it clear that I said speaker because there is the sub, the Echo sub, which does have a Zigbee with it as well. It is not a speak. Well, I guess it is a speaker, but it's not intended just for music. It has more of that bass to it. So if you're more into music, that probably you're, you're a little bit more familiar with that. They both have a three inch woofer in the speakers. So that's not going to change whether you go from the third or fourth generation. 0.8 inches. So not a little bit more than three quarters of an inch of liters in each speaker. So again, not too much of a change. The main change is which I'm still kind of debating on whether I'm, I'm happy with it or not is that the fourth generation is going to be front facing uh the dual front firing is going to be on the on the fourth generation versus the third generation you're going to have more of a 360 sound so it depends on how you store your speaker personally i have mine on my counter or i have it in the studio here where i can hear it from regardless of whether i'm sitting behind it in front of it if i'm in the kitchen wherever the case may be i can get a good sound but with the fourth generation I don't hear as good of a sound as you guys would whenever I'm testing out the speaker itself. So that's something that depending on how you store it. So if you, like I said, if you have something where it's kind of in the center, the third generation would be a better fit for you versus if you have it maybe on a shelf in a corner or something like that, it'd be a better option for you for the fourth generation. Like I said, it just depends on how you store it. One of the things um, that also is, I guess, newer, for the speakers, and these are for both of the speakers, is the Alexa Guard Plus. Shh. Okay, <laughs> I thought I was gonna react. When I reviewed the fourth generation, I did say that it was new to, the Alexa Guard Plus is new to the fourth generation, which is correct. What I didn't realize was that it is, you can also get it on the third generation. It just came out in September for the fourth generation, so that's going to be the first, the fourth generation is going to be the first one to actually kind of, I guess, promote it, so to speak. But you can still get Alexa Guard Plus on the third generation okay. as well. I'll start guarding now. Okay. <laughs> so you're probably curious what exactly is Guard versus Guard Plus. Well, first of all, here is the difference between the two. And pretty much it's going to act as kind of a sound system. So it's going to listen to any smoke detectors, any glass breaking, and it's going to alert you. Fortunately, I have not had to test this out. You do get more of a benefit. And like I said, you can see the difference between the two on 
um, the plus versus just the free version. So you're going to have more protection with it. You also have to remember where you're placing your speaker at if you're going to use the guard or the guard plus because it's going to need to be closer to windows or uh, or the smoke detectors, wherever the case may be, so that way it can easily be picked up. And so if you're leaving the house, just let Alexa know that you're leaving. Alexa, I'm home. Okay, I'll stop guarding now. So, of course, if you're still home, you can have it going on, which I think would be a huge benefit. But if you, if you know, you're home, you're like, I don't need them. I, I can do it on my own. You know, that's of course up to you. Now, if you want me to do a video on specifically Alexa guard versus guard plus, please let me know. And I can do a video to kind of help elaborate on that and kind of test that out. But if you guys, you know, just kind of want to wing it like I usually do, <laughs> then, um, you know, Pretty much I won't do a video but it, like I said I want to give you information that you guys are wanting to see so now I'm going to set up the speakers hopefully this little stinker right here does not freak out so I'm gonna try and play some music on the third generation first and then I'm gonna switch it over to the fourth generation so you guys can hear the difference I do have them both set to the halfway point on the volume so and I'm going to double check now Alexa set volume to five on echo three all right, that's set. Alexa, set volume to five on Echo 4. Okay, and it's set up. And of course, yes, I did have to tilt my head so that way I can see the ring. Because even at my current angle, I don't have the best view of the ring light. I'm going to start playing the music. Playing from desktop widget. So that's playing on the third generation. I'm about to start playing on the fourth generation. So what guys, what do you think guys? Which one sounds better? The third generation to fourth generation. Now keep in mind, I'm asking you guys because the fourth generation is front firing, so you guys hear more than I do. So I'm going to start over with a different song I'm playing on the third generation. But a fair warning, I'm setting it at full volume. So if you have any earbuds or anything like that, I do want to let you know because I do not want you to go deaf. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and set volume to 10 on Echo 3. All right, guys, so again, this is full volume, so just kind of give me a heads up. So I'm going to go ahead and set the volume. Alexa, set volume to 10 on Echo 4. All right, so it's on full blast. So again, give me guys a fair warning. I don't want you guys to go deaf. So here we go. You, but I did hear more bass and more loudness, more of a louder volume on the fourth generation than I did the third generation. Both of them had great sound, but from my angle, I actually heard more from the fourth generation and it's still front firing. So I do want to keep emphasizing that because if you're from possibly from my point of view, it may have sounded 
you know, maybe just a little different from my point of view versus from your point of view, but you've probably heard a bigger difference. That kind of just sums up for the differences between the two speakers. Me personally, I would probably upgrade in an everyday life. Not, and I'm not just saying just for review purposes. It has faster processor. I'm outside, like I said, the only thing that irks me about this, the upgrade is the ring light. Oh, and I did mention this on my, uh, the original review for the fourth generation. Another thing that kind of bugs me a little bit is the fact that the color of the cord does not match the speaker. And I had one lovely <laughs> commenter point out that I can paint it. I don't want to paint it. <laughs> Mike, see, I'm calling you out on that. <laughs> He's a regular commenter, so I do have sarcasm with it. I've kind of, I, at least in my opinion, I think I've kind of built a little rapport on that one. So I do appreciate the, you know, the loyal followers. It really, truly means a lot to me. So um, I love to be able to, you know, kick the little sarcasm back and you guys interpret it the same way that I do. So I do want to go ahead and throw that out there. Um, Mark's, Mike C, that's all I have to say to you. <laughs> Although I still respond to your comment whenever I get a chance. I just haven't had a chance. So um, that's the only thing that kind of bugs me about the upgrade as well. And I didn't realize that it, it does have it on the fourth generation as well, or the third generation as well. Um, but with the darker speakers, it at least had a dark cord from what I recall. Maybe I'm having amnesia all of a sudden. I don't know. But again, that's just my opinion on the two speakers, the differences on the two. I personally would upgrade, especially if I had a lot of devices you know, smart devices such as the lights, the thermostat, uh, the smart plugs, you know, so that way you can all connect it to just one device and kind of have Alexa control everything. Although I probably wouldn't suggest making her mad because she might shut everything down. Although she can still be rude. You just can't be rude back to her, <laughs> apparently. Um, because I've told her that I loved her and she just told me that's nice. She doesn't return the love back. <laughs> So in case anybody wants to try that, she just, she'll just tell you, I know, or we're just better as friends, something along those lines, which I think is kind of funny. Enough about Alexa, we're talking about the speakers. If you want a speaker just for the music aspect of it, the third generation, if you can find it, I will go ahead and throw that disclaimer out, it wouldn't be a bad investment because you're going, you're having some of the most top technology to it. Um, if you're not going to use the Zigbee or any of the other features to it. It's a great speaker just by itself, but if you're going to use the Zigbee, definitely worth the upgrade. It's only, my guess, uh, double the price. <laughs> but um, the cheap side of me obviously wants to do the third generation. And that's, again, that's just my personal opinion. It all just depends on what you're going to use it for. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer as much as I can. <laughs> In the meantime, make sure you subscribe to Jazzy Reviews as well as my other YouTube channel, Jazzy Foods. In the meantime, stay tuned and stay jazzy. Thanks for watching, guys.